today we're going to go over Pinaceae. These are the evergreens, although evergreen's a misnomer. While all of the trees you see behind me that are needle leaf have their needles and it's winter, there's one that's deciduous, and that's the tamarack, also known as the hackamatack or the larch. These members of the Pinaceae represent the largest family meaning they're found on every continent and as far south as Florida and as far north as well the subarctic regions in the northern shields of Canada. In North America there are no poisonous Pinaceae members. There is an evergreen shrub called the yew that has highly toxic seeds in its almost cord olive shaped fiery red juicy berries. As a group the Pinaceae are known for their rich content of vitamin C. Their resin often referred to as pitch or sap, is flammable, it's also watertight. Mix it with white powdery campfire ash, powdered eggshells or seashells to create a catalyst that creates a strong epoxy resin. You can glue your fletchings, your arrowheads and their wrappings. You could even use the resin as a means to waterproof the seams of your birch bark canoe or drinking container. We're going to check out local members of the Panaceae and give you some details on their edible, medicinal, and utilitarian uses. You can get Bodril out of white pine, but be mindful that it has to be a dead, debarked tree branch that is still high up in the tree. The bark of the young trees and new growth is smooth and thin. Bark on older trees is from one and a half to two inches thick, very dark and divided into broad flat ridges by shallow fissures. In older trees, limb lean is also an indicator of north or south. The limbs on the south side of a white pine tree enjoy all the sunlight they need and often grow on a more horizontal plane, whereas the limbs on the north side of a white pine tree tend to grow at a more upward angle, attempting to get out of the tree's own shadow. This tree, as well as many other Panaceae, contains powerful antioxidants and potentiators of vitamin C. In fact, the inner bark of white pine has some of the highest levels of polyphenols in the plant kingdom. One of the best ways to eat part of the tree is to cut the bark into short noodle-like pieces and roast them on a hot rock near the fire. White pine is an important winter food source. The inner bark can be collected and eaten raw or cooked. We prefer to roast it on a flat rock near the fire or on the wood stove until it turns a golden brown and make pine chips. These are the proper pines. Okay, so we have actual common name pine trees. They're rich in vitamin C. The white pines are more mild and more preferred for a food. Uh, there's a young white pine behind me here. You can tell even from a distance the difference between a white pine and a red pine because when they're young, the white pine have a smooth bark, and we use that bark when it's bark peeling season, uh, usually the first full moon in May until August, to make containers that are watertight, to cook in, to store water in, um, you know, even just to store uh, powdered dried raspberries and blackberries in. But uh, the red pine has a scaly bark even when it's young. The other piece that from a distance you can tell uh, the, uh, the red pine, white pine apart is the uh, overall shape of the tassels on the ends of the branches. On the white pine, they're kind of loose. seemingly disorganized. On the red pine, they appear uh, more organized, tighter, almost like a bottle brush. So come on down to the main primitive skills school. Learn tracking, awareness, get connected to something that's real. Whether it's hunting or fishing, or just going hiking, maybe you're a bird watcher. But there's so much more out there. And that's what we're all about. Sharing with folks the ways of our ancestors. Because it seems to make people happier, make them smarter, and it's fun. Visit our website at www.primitiveskills.com. Sign up for a course. We've got lots of space and a lot of instructors who are eager to share.